If you want to use your existing phone number with your Microsoft Teams phone system, you'll need to transfer that number from your current carrier to Teams phone. This process is called porting or specifically port in. In this video, I'll show you exactly what you would need and how to do this. You'll want to do this after you have already set up your team's phone system, including your auto attendant. Okay, the first step is to go to the team's admin center. So admin.teams.microsoft.com. Then in our left bar here, we'll go to voice phone numbers. So you'll see the phone numbers you already purchased from Microsoft and what we want to do is we want to port a number. So I should point out first, if you are going to have trouble with this, you can create a case with Microsoft for them to help you out. So that's also an option, but let's go ahead and click on port. Okay, so quickly, you're just telling that you basically need like your latest bill. We'll have all the information on there, all the phone numbers you want to and all, you know, account number, things like that. And obviously not to cancel anything yet until this is done. And there's just things about that. Uh, the phone numbers are in one bill there. And the most important thing here is that even though Microsoft says that this could take seven to 14 days, a lot of it depends on your current carrier or your current service provider. Okay, so we'll go through all this. There's just the format for using CSV file, but you don't need to worry about that. So let's just click next. Okay, so first our country. So this just asks you what kind of number it is. Most likely just geographic number uh, rather than a toll free. So go with that. I just shows you that it can be assigned. This number that you pour over can be assigned for all these things. And voice app is like your auto attendant call queue. And this gives you a little bit more information. So let's click next. So I have an example bill here open and we're going to grab that first number right there. And that's going to be our BTN. And then back in the team's admin center, we'll paste that here, but we want to format it in this E164, which is like that. Right, so United States, you go plus one. Okay, then we click check BTN. So you should see this and your current operator or provider up top. Then here in this format, we want to list the phone numbers that we want to transfer. So you want to enter it exactly like this. Okay, and you can always backspace and it'll show you that example. And if you want another number, just that semicolon. So for us, we're actually going to do one number, but we could have if we needed to transfer the other numbers as well. And you can do the same thing, but with the CSV file, it's easy just to enter them here unless you have like 50 numbers, right? Let's click next. Okay, so we validated one out of one numbers. That's cool, it shows our current operator and that's a valid number. That's what you should get at the end here before you go to next. Now from our bill, we're going to add all this information. So order name, this is just for ourselves. So maybe, you know, port main business number and then requested port dates. So you can read that, but basically saying when you would like this number transferred and ideally before you get billed again for it, right? The earliest that Microsoft has is in a week essentially. So we'll pick that and sure 5 a.m. as soon as possible, which numbers all the ones that we included on this order. And then I'll just show you this and I'll fill it out for this example, but your organization name, current details, okay? So your provider, your account number again from your bill, obviously you typically have a pin. You already fill that in. Now the kind of the main user from there and your email address, e-signature would be best. So you'll just receive that in your email address. And then maybe your IT email here, if they need to be notified when, you know, what's happening, when is this updated? That's what I would add here. And one thing to point out is that the phone number here also needs to be in that plus one format. And then we can keep going to service address. You should have an address here in your Microsoft Teams phone system. So that's just saying where it's going to be used. So go ahead and type that in. Okay, so typically the phone number usage for this order says is user. Do we want it to change it? Yes, most likely you do. So your main business phone number is most likely going to be an auto attendant. So that's not a user type number. And even if you do have user type numbers, you still want to change the original one from user. Although you can also change this later if you want to, but if you already know what to do, then might as well do that here. You're going to be able to do that in the next step here. 
So we only have one number and it'll show you this for any numbers that you added. So right now the usage is user. So this is if you're assigning a phone number per person, but you know you most likely have one that you'll need to change to an auto attendant. So go ahead and select that one and update number usage. So an auto attendance is a voice app, just like a call queue. And then click apply. Okay, so right from the beginning, we're going to make sure this one comes in as a voice app phone number. And click next. And then this last page in the porting wizard is just a review of everything. So you can expand these and look at that. The letter of authorization, that's the important part. So once you click down here, complete and send e-signature request, the person in the letter of authorization is going to receive that in their email to sign. Okay, and that's going to start the process. So let's go ahead and click complete and send e-signature request. Okay, and it's just letting us know that that was placed. We can click finish. And then in the order history, you should see the one that you created. So here you can edit the details or see the status of who this is being sent to. Order details here as well. So you can cancel this. You can also just tell them that you can download the PDF file of this instead to submit a paper copy. But we'll proceed with the e-signature. All right, so I'm back here a week later about, and let me just show you what happened so far. Okay, so the first thing you would get after you submit all of that is you would get this request letter of authorization to whoever you sent that to, the main person of the account. And then here, that person would just click review and sign, and it's just a digital e-signature, right? Okay, so then after that's done, you'll get an email pretty quickly that your port order has been submitted. And again, it looks something like this, gives you your port number ID, the name, and you will see the request of completion date. That's what you filled out. So we have the 28th here of February. Okay, importing how many numbers, that's how many numbers you can view the order. It'll just tell you that the same thing has been submitted. Okay, and then finally, so at this date, if everything's going through, you should get, well, first of all, you'll get this email next. So this means they already communicated with your current carrier and that your port order has been approved, right? So your carrier has accepted and the time has been set. And then we see the request of completion date is the same as the accepted completion date, okay? So this might change depending on your carrier. So just keep that in mind. You might have requested this date and got something else. Okay, so, and this just gives you some more information. Okay, so that's done. So today is actually is the 28th and now I received another email. So let's take a look at that. And so this is the final email you'll get on the accepted completion date. Right, so your port order activation has been completed. Maybe some things to know here. So it says the numbers are available, but may take up to two hours for it to all work as expected. Okay, so now let's go into Teams Admin Center and just some final settings to change so we can use this number with Teams phone. Okay, so then in the Admin Center, go to Voice and let's go phone numbers. We'll just verify that we have that new number. And now here at the bottom, I do see our phone number that we ported in. And you can also click on order history. And you will see the one that's the port in type that we did. The status is now completed. Okay, so we're going to take this number here, the one that we ported in, and we need to assign it to our main auto attendant. Most likely is what you have. If you have a shared calling policy, it's a little bit more complicated. So under voice, you want to go to shared calling policies and let's just click on this one. So this account here is the main auto attendant account. That's the resource account here used. And let's click update phone number. Okay, so select here under assign phone number, the new phone number you want to add, and then click assign. Okay, so it says the changes were made. It's showing us the new phone number. And then the emergency callback number, that doesn't need to change. So this is all done. So now if we go to, if you didn't have a shared call and policy, you should go to resource accounts and select that main auto attendant. So I already see that it has this new phone number here, but if you didn't, so you would just select it. You would assign and unassign a phone number here. Okay, so that should work if you're not in a shared calling plan. Otherwise you do need to go to that shared calling policy to make that phone number change. Okay, so now the last thing to do, just test it out, make sure it works and it routes properly the way you have it set up in your auto sender, right? All right, so now your existing business phone number should work with your new Microsoft Teams phone system. 
And if you need help with this or maybe something went wrong, let me know in the comments. You can also reach out on my socials, message me there, probably the easiest way and the fastest way to get a hold of me. But if you need help setting something up like this for your business or maybe even creating a shared calling plan, I have that in the description, maybe up on the screen right now if you want to create a plan like that. That's the most cost effective solution for a Microsoft Teams phone system. So if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care.